Welcome to Guns Gear Network, everyone. I want to bring you this video this afternoon about bug out bags. Now, if you followed my channel, you'll find something missing, and that is a traditional bug out bag video. Most outdoor prepping, survival, camping style channels kind of um, start their whole YouTube. <laughs> Um, channel a lot of times based around bug out bags or a bug out bag or their bug out bag and so forth. The reason you have not seen a actual bug out bag video uh, on my channel is because there are hundreds of them, hundreds and hundreds and a lot of good ones out there and I like a lot of people I like knowledge and I've gained some knowledge from other youtubers that have posted up stuff about their bug out bag or what went in it and so forth let me say this about bug out bags bug out bags are very personal in nature um, what you put in them what you want to put in them what you can put in them because some people can't afford everything some people don't can't carry the weight some people think that um, oh that's too much stuff or that's not enough I hear all these arguments all the time keep in mind guys um, you have to carry a what your necessities are for survival that you are capable of using so if you're one of these people that try going on the minimalist side with very little uh, in a small pack then that's fine as long as you have the skills to survive with that that minimal um, amount of gear other people may go way over the top so but if you can carry the weight by all means carry what you think you will need so with that said one of the bags that i always think is one of the best bags for your dollar now i'll caveat to say something else here in a minute about the as far as value um, is the old usgi alice packs now as of recent the prices have started creeping up because a popularity the supply has probably gone down some demand is up um I bought this one this one was literally like brand new when I bought it and I with the frame and everything it was like $25 so I got a good deal um, but uh, these things are slowly I don't say drying up but they're kind of a little getting a little harder to find but I think the um, Alice pack is one of the better bug out bags they've proven themselves in the field with the military for generations so the thing I like about bug out that you need to think about when it comes to bug out bags is I like an external frame because it allows me to lash things or attach things to it and it to me you can distribute weight better especially when you start lashing um, tools and, and items like that to your pack so today's gonna what the reason I started the, I decided to do this video I'm in a transition between winter and summer on my bug out bag so I'm switching out some things and kind of reorganizing and I wanted to while I had everything kind of out I figured this would be a good time to do a bug out bag uh, video and what I'm going to do is show you a few improvements that I've made to my Alice pack that you might find helpful um, also uh, then I'll show you some items that um, I keep in my bug out bag and uh, kind of how I organize things some helpful tips tricks tips all that good stuff is going to be in this video also you will um, below you will see a bug out bag list this right here is a long list and it's going to seem like a lot of stuff but you have to remember a lot of it's small items like you know you'll see fishing hooks or needles or this or that well they're t tiny items it doesn't weigh a whole lot but i'll give you a bug out list below um, it's one that i've created that uh, you can look at and kind of decide what you want what you don't want uh, what you want to keep what you don't that sort of thing so you'll have to make up your mind uh, what you find helpful in that list to use so let's get started a little bit this video is going to be a little shaky because i'm having to pick up the camera and move it around quite a bit to do this video and i apologize for that ahead of time so 
the Owl's Pack. This right here is the large. The difference between the large and the medium, um, A, it's just bigger, and B, you get some external pockets on the large you don't get on the end of the smaller uh, version. You can also attach um, pouches to the side. These are M16 pouches that I've attached to either side of this bag. I have one here and then one over here. This one here uh, actually houses my survival fishing kit. This one here uh, uh, holds my uh, fire kit, my fire making kit. So you um, you can actually add to this, which I like, where you can get to things quickly without having to dig through your whole bag. The more external pockets you have on a bag, I think the better. Uh, keep in mind, guys, there are some knockoffs of these bags floating around China made that are terrible. I've got one that a friend of mine gave me uh, that he bought thinking it was real. <laughs> it was not. He wound up giving it to me for my kid to play with. So, a <clears throat> few improvements that I did. If you know anything about the Alice Pack, it does not have traditional uh, fast tech buckle straps on the front. You have to kind of undo everything to get to the uh, lid to open it. I've redesigned it and put in these fast tech buckles so I can simply snap it and unsnap it to get into it. Also, a um, few things I, you'll notice on this bag here. Um, I have these carabiners in a lot of areas. Um, matter of fact, I keep this whole thing of carabiners. These are just the cheap carabiners. They're not designed or rated for any type of weight, uh, like climbing, but they are good for lashing uh, equipment to yourself. Uh, what I, we in the military, people call that dummy cording. So anything of importance, you want to make sure it's dummy corded. And what that means is it's tied to you. Uh, so you won't lose it, dummy. It um, usually is done with 550 cord. So some type of cordage. Uh, this one has three large outer pockets, and then again, it has ways to attach other pockets. And if you notice, I also take advantage and able to attach something like this to keep uh, another type tool. Again, I mentioned the external frame portion. If you look, I have this small compact machete uh, lashed to the side. Also, I've added a handle. These do not have a traditional carrying handle where you can just pick the bag up. What I did was I took a um, survival bracelet, cut out the fast tech buckle on either end, and then I fashioned this um, uh, with 550 cord to the pack itself. Turn it around. I've upgraded to the newer, better quality um, shoulder straps. And then I've also added a center strap that actually, uh, the traditional bags you see now usually always have this, what I call the chest strap to hold everything together. The old Alice packs did not have this strap, so I've actually made one for it. I've also upgraded and added this newer version. This 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 does not belong on an Alice pack, but it will work. This is a military, this is like the second or third version of the rucksack that they made um, that this uh, is a little more padded, a little wider, holds, distributes weights a little bit better, and you can make it work on this pack. There's a few videos out about that. And uh, so that's just a few things. Also, this one um, has what's called the shelf attached to it. And um, it, um, if you're not familiar with the shelf, I can actually take this bag off this frame and the shelf down here allows me to strap things to myself, such as heavy things uh, like water or ammunition, firewood, whatever. I can lash it to the pack and carry it because it has the shelf. If you look, I talk about adding things this right here is the um, glock uh, e-tool that's uh, fashioned underneath there and and strapped to the external portion of the frame so that gives you some ideas about the alice pack again try finding a good quality bag you don't want this thing coming apart on you um, in the middle of trying to bug out and get somewhere and next thing you know your bag's falling apart that's not a good situation so just to kind of give you a brief overview of a few things you might want to consider um, again i've got tarps this right here is a poncho my survive one of my knives this right here is uh, one of those um little mesh uh, vest like if somebody needs to find you you can be highly visible this right here is trail marking tape you can buy this by the roll i take it off the roll and just stick it in a plastic bag because it, it compacts down quicker this way i can mark trails and so forth so i don't get lost some bandanas um this right here uh, i always recommend carrying some form of binoculars at least um, a small set 
one of my compasses so here's just a pack with some little bit of stuff in it um usually like this has some zip ties it has some electrical tape has uh, some little bit of wire there it has some super glue so I have these little kits that I can use. This right here is a military container of some sort. And I forget what came in this container, um, but it came from a military surplus. I try bagging a lot of things. This right here is a survival guide and some other things, some maps um, and some other informational stuff such as wild edibles. And uh, this right here, um, it, you need to keep that in a plastic bag. Uh, Amora, this right here. I keep one of these attached to the inside of my pack just under the lid right here. And what it is, is just has a few things that are handy. I've got a knife sharpener. I've got a, a little LED light that I can turn on and look inside the pack. I've got one of the Dome's uh, fire starters and a little p38 uh keychain um can opener just a few things here to, that i can access quickly by hanging it just on the inside of the lid sunglasses bug spray sunscreen um 550 cord uh this right here is a, what i call a little a tool kit uh that's able to help me fix or fashion things or uh, you know that sort of stuff it's got some zip ties it's got um uh, some uh, clothes pins to hang your clothes up to dry it's got some little eyelets just little things to make repairs to my pack i've got extra fast tech buckles in there just a little thing to help me make repairs uh, on items this right here is my water kit and i use the sawyer mini and i'll go over that one day in a video with you guys you got a just a basic flashlight headlamp this right here is a um kind of a sanit uh let's say um sanitary style kit uh for uh, uh like hygiene it uh, if you watch one of my videos i'd mention about sponges i keep three or four sponges in my bug out bag at all times a little washcloth i also keep a what's called a chamois towel you can um these are used to dry cars mostly but because they're small packed down uh, very small compared to a traditional bath towel i can actually use this to dry off with um without taking up a lot of space so uh, i also have these little what i call ditty bags that keep uh, stuff organized this right here is my hygiene kit that has like my sewing kit deodorant um toothpaste toothbrush uh, all that type stuff is in here then i have this kit here which is my kit for um some of my um cooking and so forth it's got some uh, coffee filters it's got little packs of coffee some aluminum foil um there's some packs of coffee just quite a bit of little things in there and you can put it in little bags like this these bags came from walmart um i don't know that they're waterproof but they are rubber lined on the inside but it's just another way to organize your gear um here's some more cordage with the um uh, guy line adjusters that I showed in one of my videos uh, I did a review on this right here is my camp um, cooking kit with my um, canteen uh, already in it and uh, so forth also if you remember I did a video about dry bags this right here is one of the larger 35 liter dry bags inside of my Alice pack so it's almost like a liner so I can stuff things in this that are important that I do not want to get wet. If you can stuff most things in it, it doesn't really matter because it's going to go in this open bucket area anyway. Um, so you might as well make sure it's waterproof by putting in something like this. So you want to make sure you have dry bags put in. Uh, again, you can design your bag and kind of what you want to carry what you don't want to carry um and i'll show you a couple things real quick that some people may say yeah i'm not carrying that um but i do have it um here that uh give you an example like these are frog gigs i've got a couple of them i just left them in the pack this one here's a small one. this one is very lightweight this one's got a little heft to it this one here is very lightweight it's hard to fashion something like that in the field out in the woods uh it can be done don't get me wrong through bushcraft skills but something like this can be attached you can actually use this um, for getting game um, or uh, especially um, frogs that's is what it's designed for it is actually a what's called a frog gig or a frog spear something like that just keeping your pack is pretty uh, easy uh, to use and it uh, can help you uh, secure game so um, that's kind of a broad overview about 
the bug out bag if you look uh forgot there's toilet paper back here on my toilet paper i just simply uh take it like that and push it down this right here is a metal um flask let me tell you the situation with this this right here is nothing more than soap this whole thing has soap in it and the reason it's in a metal flask and they make a few different versions uh the metal flask uh, stanley makes one that's really nice that can be found in walmart in the camping section the reason this is in a metal flask is because i had this full of soap one time in a plastic one and it leaked all on the inside of my bug out bag boy that was a mess so with something like this this right here will not uh break or crack or anything like that so you can keep uh soap or you know whatever inside of a i suggest highly suggest a durable metal flask be careful if you're putting things in your bug out bag like that that is um in plastic like plastic bottles and so forth it can leak and it can cause some major problems like it did with mine i had a, I had a really big mess so anyway, a few other things. These right here are some games that I keep, some playing cards, some dice. Um, this right here is just a little morale kit, I call it. It's got some Altoids. You can actually, obviously, uh, use the Altoid 10 for other purposes. It's got some gum in here. Uh, so I just keep little stuff like that handy. Um, it's just morale boosting when you have little things like that. Some people may ditch that type stuff. They said, hey, I ain't carrying no games, or I'm not carrying this, or I'm not doing that that's fine um a few things i didn't show was like your food or clothes again you're going to, have to carry what food you know i carry a lot of uh I, I might carry mres are very heavy so i'm going to carry more of um the dehydrated type foods and i might carry some survival bars like the if you look over here i did a review on the tack bar so usually i have at least one or two tack bars and something like this or i'll have uh, at least a lot of granola bars uh, energy bars that sort of thing and then some dehydrated foods um, but I'm going to be able to based on my skill level I should be able to secure some game and do okay uh, with some of that for the longer term um, again this is a bug out bag this is what you're going to carry and a lot of people use the 72 hour term and that's fine but what happens after 72 hours you know can you survive past that you better be able to figure out some things through survival methods. I always recommend having some type of survival guide. And this right here, I don't I hate to say it's the Bible of survival, but it's pretty close. Uh, this right here is pretty well respected. This is the SAS survival guide. Uh, this has been talked about in tons of videos. But make sure you have something like this because... Unless you're using this skill over and over again and a lot, it starts degrading. And you're, even your trying to visualize and think about what to do let's say shelter building just a simple graphic or a simple instruction would say oh yeah i remember that because you just didn't quite understand what was the best method to do something so keep that in mind as you want to look at all the that stuff uh when you're putting your bug out bag together to be able to um survive long term not just 72 hours 72 hours is fine that's just one window uh, another thing i'll show you i keep one of these attached to the outside of my pack it's one of the solar chargers that actually charges like a cell phone uh, i keep that on the lash to the outside so as i'm walking it's actually charging um, if you look even in this uh, ambient light here it's still getting a charge uh, but little things like that again this is not a bug out bu bug out bag 101 type video it's just kind of an overview and i'm going to put that list below to let you guys uh, kind of sort through it and see what you like what you don't like and kind of make it your own anyway guys i appreciate you tuning in i appreciate your support of the channel uh to help us support the channel if you would uh hit that like button share our videos with social media somewhere that always is helpful for us and um if you're not a subscriber please subscribe so you'll be able to follow us and get a new video reported uh, to you when we get those uh, out and uh, we're going to try cranking out some more videos uh here in the near future as always guys i appreciate you tuning in like share and subscribe we'll be bringing another video shortly have a good day guys